Welcome to the fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition actual play campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the Shifter Eldritch Knight. And Joel Gorman, playing Wrath, the Azamar Warlock. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the Human Swashbuckler Rogue. And we're joined today by a very special guest. Hi, I'm Ginny D, and I will be playing Ava Blightward, the Human Abjuration Wizard. Thank you, Ginny, for joining Woo! us here in our studio in Toronto. It's my pleasure. We are so excited to have you here. It has been a big undertaking to bring you on up, get the studio ready to have a fourth player once again. We did the first run, trying it out with Kyle. We're experimenting with some more things. Uh, so it is just so great to have you playing with us for the next couple games. I'm so pumped. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and we're going to dive into that um, very, very shortly. So I think without further ado, let us return to the world of Drakenheim. <laughs> Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible, while simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all. The fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath had finished their quest in the forest of Ar in the Ochtenwald, where they had slain the dragon, helped capture the <laughs> dragon Trithesia, slain the dragon's children, and claimed the ancient crown blade of the elves for Wilhelm. Mm. Returning back to Altbrook, our heroes reunited with Wilhelm's forces and plotted their next move to march on the city of Todseld to force the compliance of Duke Ludwig von Fritz, the ruler of Todsfeld and Lord of Castle Sodden. Several weeks have passed since you left Altbrook, for it has taken the time for the forces of the Hooded Lanterns, a contingent of soldiers given granted to you by the Duke of Altbrook, and your whole train of royal guard to march the distance from Altbrook down to Toddsfeld. In that time, a flurry of communication has run back and forth between yourself, Wilhelm, as well as your closest advisors. This includes the Lieutenant Commander, uh, El Elias Drexel, as well as Eldrick Runeweaver of the Amethyst Academy, who along with River and Wrath, have been sending messages using the sending spell, aptly, uh, to secure these last few bits of commitments. Um, with, with this has already come a reply from the Duke of Todsfeld, um, decrying your rule as illegitimate and declaring the independence of Todsfeld from whatever mess you plan on weaving. How does Wilhelm reply to that? Well, first I'd like to blame the newspapers in Altbrook for starting <laughs> this whole thing, but... I 20, mean... 25 words. Oh, 25 words. <laughs> Am I responding to the Duke of Toddsfeld specifically? Yeah. Oh man, I don't know. Um, I'm going to respond and say, See you soon. That's it. Ooh. Ooh, okay. As you travel with your contingent, 
It is a marching column of several hundred soldiers. By no means what could be considered a large army by any stretch of the imagination, um, but a very elite force. For as you march down towards Toddsfeld, um, the you receive several representatives from the Steel Fangs, the mercenary company, as well as noted, confirming that the Steel Fangs, as well as the Ochtenwalder regulars, will be waiting for you in Toddsfeld, where they are already securing a encampment for your forces to wait. However, one night along the road, Elias Drexel and Eldrick Runeweaver call a meeting with the three of you in your tent. These meetings are pretty normal. Um, pretty much Elias wishes to meet with you and discuss plans every night. Generally, one of the first things that you hear the updates on is that Sebastian, Crow, Paluto, and Veo have traveled out on their own mission to ensure that the Queen of Thieves and the Amethyst Academy Directorate do not interfere in what is about to happen here. Um, secure in that knowledge, Eldrick Runeweaver, the arch, one of the Archmages of the Academy, the adjusts his spectacles and strokes his beard and says, my lord, we have one other potential resource that may be useful to you in these circumstances at the Academy. I mean, we'll take all the help that we can get. I speak this with caution, but one of our members has signaled to me an interest in being involved personally in these in the battles to come, for she has a rather personal stake in the matter. I am hesitant, but she is an accomplished mage of the Academy, and I think you should hear her out. I mean, it would be nice to have a uh, skilled and powerful spellcaster in our group. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, Wrath has fallen ill. <laughs> And so, not on his best game, as usual. Very well, then. I believe she will be arriving later this evening via teleportation. Um, and it is not much longer than after that, after you take your supper in the evening, that Elias returns with another Academy mage. Introducing, saying, my liege, please be introduced to Ava Blightward, Master Wizard. Do I recognize, do I know who I'm meeting with? Yes. I'm fully aware of everyone's full, complete histories. And you, you know that, um, before you come in, we can say, I hope you're ready for this. The king is a very good man. He wants to do the right thing. I think he'll hear you out. Well, we have that in common, and hopefully we agree on what the right thing is. I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> I know as much as I can, and all we can do is have the most possible knowledge going into any given situation, analyze it, parse it, and then act. Hmm. He does keep clo co close company with Wrath, you understand. You'll have to work with him as well. Yes, I think there will be difficulties with each member of this. And you're aware that the soldier that follows him is one of the Ochtenwald regulars. Yes, uh, she pulls out just a sheaf of parchment uh, flips through a few pages, just covered in fine, spidery handwriting, just detailed notes. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, I've done. I've done full research onto uh, onto as, as complete a history of each as I could mm. locate. Uh, I, you know, you must be prepared. You always are. Well, as I said, 
I think the king will hear your petition and hopefully he'll accept, but it does put an interesting imposition on what he's planning to do. With that, the introduction is made. What does Ava look like? Uh, Ava is a human in the purple and, and gold uh, robes of the Amethyst Academy. Um, she has a fine, straight, dark hair that's cut into sort of a severe uh, bob. And um, <laughs> yeah, just, you, know, you don't want it in your face when you're busy doing magic stuff. Uh, and she has sort of like a pinched appearance about her face, like someone who, her, like her resting face is just like sort of unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, resting, uh, resting wizard face. If you will. Resting yeah. wizard face. <laughs> and the, is there a creature scurrying alongside you? Uh, not so much scurrying as there is a uh, just a just a chunky long lizard in sort of like a stripy gray, just laid across her forearm, <laughs> um, and it has these stubby little legs that are like wrapped around her arm. And as you, um, if you are paying attention to it, it will uh, at some point just like stick out its tongue to just like lick its own, you know, eye, and it's like a bright blue tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Eldrick says, Ava is a master wizard of the Amethyst Academy, and if I say so my, myself, as a fellow, uh, fellow student of the School of Abjuration, uh, I think that one day, uh, I, I w would have hoped that my own work would have been regarded as some of the finest in, in the Abjuration School, but I fear, uh, Ava, your legacy will far outstrip mine by the end of it. It's very gracious of you. <laughs> Your Majesty, Ava has an interesting request to make of you. Uh, Ava, thank you so much for, for joining us here and uh, agreeing to join the fight. Yes, well, I think we have to discuss what that entails before I can truly, firmly agree to any, any set of expectations here. Uh, I was informed that you have a personal dealing with this. I do. Ava has very intimate knowledge of House von Fritz. Were you the court wizard, or...? No, uh, unfortunately that was never a duty to which um, the Duke entrusted me. I suppose we should put all of our cards on the table, as they say. Uh, I am one of Duke von Fritz's children. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. I understand this will place you in a position of mistrust with me. However, I would also like to share that I have my own position of mistrust with many of you. Uh, several of you are, if not directly, at least blood related to people who are responsible for the deaths of some of my siblings. So I think we're in a, a an emotionally conflicted space, perhaps. Or I assume. That would be putting it lightly, yes. What is one of the children of Von Fritz doing meeting with us? Is Eldrick, you, you, you trust her? Ava is a foremost member of the Academy and she is here on a personal interest I believe that she, she asked to speak with you and grant you this audience, and I believe that her interest in this is genuine. She has been a loyal member of the Academy for some time. My father is an unfit ruler, and many would argue a bad man. With this, Wil Wilhelm's hand was on the hilt of his sword after the mention, and then as she as she says that, he takes his hand off the hilt of the sword and not, starts nodding. Yeah. All right, I think that's something we can all agree on at this point. Yes, I think this is common ground that we share. Uh, I believe he is acting not only irrationally but perhaps even in madness, and I I hold no loyalty to him. However, I do hold loyalty to the rest of my family, my siblings, and I don't believe they should be held responsible for his actions. 
I would like to assist you in getting this situation safely under control, but I want to make sure that my father is the only one who suffers for his own acts. Rule number 84. Oh, by the way, I, I have a set of rules that I, I it's, a, it's a whole thing. Oh, you'll know. So many. Yeah, you'll get it. Yeah, rule number 84. We all 84. must follow rules. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, God. Uh, rule Don't number 84. Do not encourage him. <laughs> do not condemn a person for the sins of their ancestors. Here you we should go. not hold the children of Von Fritz. This is why I don't blame you for the death of my eldest brother, Felix, in, in the war. Thank you. Which I, who your father? A lot, a lot of terrible things occurred during the war on both sides, hmm. and a lot of people were lost in that war that didn't deserve to be. Ava's abilities and skills she has offered to assist you directly in this matter. But not only does she have knowledge of the defenses of Castle Sodden, I understand you are the one that put many of those magical wards in place. Yes. But also knowledge of the situation in Toddsfeld and with the Duke specifically. Thus, both her Expertise and f abilities in the field, I hope, will be valuable to you and signal the continued cooperation of the Amethyst Academy, at least the l membership at large. Ava, I'm going to be blunt with this. Um, Please. I don't see your father making it out of this alive. Yes, I performed the same calculus before coming to you. It does seem unlikely that, that he something... can be handled in a peaceful way. Is that something that you may, if you're going to be with the three of us. Are you okay if we kill your dad? Thank you, Wrath. I believe it is one of the more rational solutions to the problem, yes, uh, whether or not it has an emotional impact on me as my personal business and does not need to be discussed as a group. Now, I like that. Makes sense. Do you anticipate that any of your siblings are gonna take your father's side? I think that's an important thing to point out is if we're planning on not holding them accountable, they gotta be not accountable for their action. Have I heard from any of them at all about this specifically? Elias Drexel who is the Lieutenant Commander, the one of the leaders of the Hooded Lanterns and a general in the military component of this battle. He speaks up, he's a, he's a gruff, grizzled man with big sideburns and a, and a beard, longer hair, and he carries a pair of swords underneath the green cloak that he wears. And he says, I understand that Von Fritz has put out a call to arms for several of the, to other of the counts, barons, baronesses, and the other nobles that inhabit the marshlands within his domain. Unfortunately, my lord, there are several other traitors that have joined up with von Fritz and have sought to reinforce his defenses with their own troops. From what I understand, several of Von Fritz's own children have actually refused this call themselves, which is fortunate for several of them represent some of the closer, the closer assets that he can call upon. Nevertheless, I'm still concerned. And Elias turns to Ava, Wrath, and Eldrick and says, my reports already indicate that the Duke has been purchasing some sort of constructed soldiers and weapons made of delirium from the Academy. So I don't understand how the Academy can support two sides of a war at the same time. The Academy is not supporting the Duke. Wrath? The Academy loves money. <laughs> <laughs> Eldrick, Eldrick echoes and says, it is we, unfortunately we like true. Money. It is unfortunately true that the Academy must still abide the Edicts of Lumen, which means that 
our services are available to everyone at free and equal cost. That said, I can confirm that the Duke's most recent payment did not come in. And we have decided, and I understand that the Academy will be providing no further assets other than those that have been already delivered due to lack of payment. Unfortunately, from what we understand, the, the Duke promised quite a bit in payment over one of our handy payment plans. And he received a great deal of material and assets from the Academy that have not been paid for yet. Just buying up an army on credit. <laughs> yes. D does the Amethyst Academy have the ability to like, if the loans aren't paid, they can like just remotely disable the constructs? Cause that would be great. We are sending two of our most capable agents to assist this effort directly. So I think that that does represent the Academy coming to collect. We're students. getting a second capable agent. Who? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Rath, I think he meant. Oh, is We're it us? An agent. <laughs> oh. He's asking. Is it us? <laughs> no, it's you. Is it? You're saying Rath. Are you saying I'm capable? <laughs> Don't let it go to your head, Rath. I'm, like, I'm touched. I am also a master of wizard. A master of wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Master Wizard. <laughs> you've, uh, you've accomplished being able to summon ores. Finally, yes. I constantly keep two sets of ores in my bag of holding now, <laughs> and I will just use illusion magic to make it appear like they appeared out, but I'm always going to keep ores now in my bag of holding. I have two ores sets. for a boat? Yeah. It is we the were standard a, We were in a situation magic. a while ago where we needed oars for a boat, and because- Which I provided a boat, like I made a boat, but it, because I couldn't make oars, like they somehow they I, judged Raph me. said he was a master of all magic, and so I said, can you please make us some oars? And he was unable to do so, and I have kind of set that as the bar for whether or not somebody's good at magic. It's reasonable, why go to the expense of creating a boat if you cannot also create the method of propulsion? Thank you. Exactly. I feel like you're just splitting hairs. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should be more impressed about the boat. <laughs> Look, we're getting sidetracked. <sighs> I think we can use the, as Wilhelm put it, the unlimited funds to uh, take away some of the Duke's purchased, acquired materials. I will simply say this. Duke von Fritz has in his possession a small arsenal of the most cutting edge magical equipment produced by the Amethyst Academy using delirium. It is extremely deadly and very dangerous, including the construct guardians that now reinforce his walls. I apologize for what will have to be done. These creatures, part of the security of, of them is that they only obey the commands of those that have purchased them through the academy. We don't have a way of remotely disabling them. That would defeat the entire purpose. I think the academy needs to revisit their uh, structure of business because anyone could really rob you blind at this point. Desperate times. Um, well, what about the... Uh obvious, uh, what's their weaknesses? Uh, we built them. Did your father build these? Probably. I mean, he's kind of the architect of constructs in the academy. Yes. It uh, does seem peculiar that the permission for such a large amount of forces to be levied to the Duke is unusual. I agree with you, Rudy. It has over leveraged in the, the academy in a way that is uncharacteristic for it and perhaps signals some of the meddling of the directorate. They do not like you. 
I don't much like your dad. We we have a problem with dads mm. of the people currently in this in this group. Yes. Um, yes. I understand. I also have a father who I have a mixed relationship with. Mm. Elias Drexel, the lieutenant commander, speaks up again. More than just the academy, though. Something else is helping Von Fritz. Would you know about this, Ava? Do I know what he's referring to? There are our scouts looking across the area have seen these academy constructs, but there's other creatures alongside them. The academy constructs are very plain in their make. They're creations of stone and wood but they're creatures of metal and flesh. Gross. Oh, I think. That would be. Uh... Oh no. <laughs> yes, we've been stabbed by them many times. <laughs> they are um, oh. from the uh, Albrecht University. Yeah. More specifically, um, Everett Freed, yes. who is still at large, uh, one of the, uh, just to bring you up to speed, Ava, uh, Everett Freed was a faculty member at the university who was practicing strange science of uh, to try to How mimic. do you say it? How do you say it? No, this was not chemistry. Oh, good. <laughs> no, this was... Uh, anatomy. Anatomy. Yes. Um, trying to mimic the abilities of spellcasters using scientific research. Everett Freed seems, he, he was kidnapping students and transforming them into monstrosities. I know about this. This is a new development, um, and so this would be news to you. He was kidnapping students for experimentation. We were investigating missing people at Albrook University just before coming here, which led us on quite an expedition to uncover the crimes of Everett Freed, who fled after killing one of our own trusted allies, who luckily, through, again, some magical means, has recently been brought back. But Everett Freed is still at large, and our last reports indicated that he was fleeing towards Toddsfeld. So you believe he's now working, creating these flesh constructions for my father? We uh, read some of the n communication back and forth, which definitely led us in that direction. They are awful creatures. Worse still, Toddsfeld lies along the Dran River, and due to its conditions in the marshlands, the water collects quite heavily around Toddsfeld. Of course, it, much more so than when before the dam was blown, but the city itself is flooded and the levels of contamination in the water have grown considerably over the past several months. Some of my scouts have even reported seeing signs of things like the haze and contaminated monsters that you would find in Drakenheim, lurking in the wilderness and in the water. There are rumors that several weeks ago, locals in Toddsfeld spotted a massive creature swim over the ruins of the dam and through the river as it flows through the city and head out towards the bay. And in its wake, people have grown far more concerned and more wary of going out at night with you marching on Toddsfeld, a large number of people have fled the city itself, but many of them have nowhere to go. We do not march on Toddsfeld to destroy the city. Not this time? <laughs> I am not Great question. my father. What about you? I'm gonna do everything I can to help people of Toddsfeld because in the past I have come in with ill intentions, but I'm here to try to make up for as much of it as I can. 
which I know is impossible. It's an impossible task to, to do that. It doesn't look good. The last time forces under our banner came to Toddsfeld, we destroyed the city. I the Octavald Irregulars did what was done under a plot that myself and your father made. So you're going to find that the people of Toddsfeld are not very trusting of you, Wilhelm. I don't expect them to trust me, but I do expect to set a new example of what the Von Kessel name hmm. means. We will march upon Toddsfeld and we will secure the town. They will kneel before their king. Uh, out of respect, yes. They will. And fear. I, <laughs> because they want to. They, <laughs> we're going to help the people of Toddsfeld. Their ruler, the Duke, has let the city of Toddsfeld fall into disarray. The mining operations in that city are, are dangerous to say the least, and yet he has forced people to work the mines regardless. He has forced the city to continue to suit his needs despite the dangers. We have unlimited funding from the Dragon Horde that we uncovered, and I think as an act, the Von Kessel name should be put forward as somebody who is going to rebuild the dam and help the people of Toddsfeld find a new and better duke to do what's right for the people. I hope that when choosing my father's replacement, you will consider those of his bloodline despite his misdeeds, because while the others in my family are perhaps not perfect rulers, they are not responsible for their father's acts, and while they're not copies of him, they may have taken on some of the of the darknesses that he has implemented on them as a father, but I think that they should be given an opportunity to, to show a different side of themselves. I agree. I wouldn't have led with they share some of the darknesses of their of their father, but I hear you. Who among us does not? <laughs> I totally get it. Yeah, I guess I guess I get that too. Literally, I'm carrying a book handed down to me by my father that dictates everything I do in my life. So, um, Wait, your rules are from your father's hand. So you so you're holding a book of rules that your father wrote that you obey. But you also got upset when I tried to blame you for the actions of your father. It's one of the rules. <laughs> Is that Honestly, a rule? don't, don't. <laughs> Is there a rule about making your own uh, critical analyses of a situation um, to determine? No, uh, they're pretty set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty in there, and they're pretty rigid. Uh, well, rule is... 72, <laughs> trust your instincts even if it conflicts with these rules. Hmm. That's his one getaway <laughs> rule. And, so and what is the purpose of the rules if at any time you can choose to ignore them? The, the implication of that rule is that rules cannot cover every situation, and therefore sometimes your instincts can supersede the rules because you might find yourself in a situation that the rules can't dictate. I really like you. <laughs> And I'll be honest, like, when we first met Wilhelm, he was very set on his rules, like, mm -hmm. very non-bendable when it comes to situations. But he has gotten better over time yeah, and can yes. learn to insert his own critical thinking into mm -hmm. the, the situation. Throughout the rule book, if you will. I will never. <laughs> no, like, in, like, Not metaphorically, this, yeah. in the moment. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> he would never lose that rule book. Yes, well. <laughs> you really just like in like a few moments broke down his entire. <laughs> Is there a problem that my father has given me a rule book? Is this going to be an issue? Would well, you like to read the rule book? It's quite. There's, there's... Uh, actually, oh, you'll know yes, it. By I, the end of this, you'll know it. I would love to, to peruse it uh, perhaps later just because. You know, when there's a new source of information, 
anyway. Do, do you have a candidate? Please keep in mind that we are still, although our goal is to reshape Westamar to be better, we are still under the edicts of Lumen. So if you are proposing yourself as Oh, a... no, no. Good. No, no, that would be, no, that would, no. Uh, however, I think that um, my youngest sister, Heidi, is perhaps in the position to be most shaped. Mm. Are there also, it, does Heidi have any affiliations or, uh, I guess, uh, respect for the crown as Wilhelm may hold? <laughs> Are there any that already lack? Yeah, no, we're, like we're looking. We're looking that. for uh, people that fall in line. Uh, What's not to <laughs> like? That, that. My understanding. Uh, <laughs> Elias Drexel chimes in. My understanding is that Heidi is quite young. How old is she? She's like in her early twenties. Oh, oh, I'm it, sure that she, that a firm position from. Wilhelm as king and an understanding of what the consequences are. Let me be frank. As the youngest, Heidi was perhaps given the least attention and freedom to be herself. I think that she would react very well to being uh, hmm. paid attention to, for lack of a better <laughs> phrase. Uh, I think that it is quite possible that if she were treated as a good option as a replacement for her father that she would be so pleased at this opportunity that she would be uh, more, more more receptive. Consider it considered. Not that I I'm... I will. <laughs> not that I... Uh, I don't immediately want to go to the cloak and dagger on this, Elias Drexel says, but is it possible that... Uh, your father would be swayed by some hostages. Could we collect your siblings and use I them as a I would not bargain? have any confidence that my father would change any of his plans over the safety of his children. I also, I mean, I want to be ruthless here in Toddsfeld, Elias, but I, I don't want to kidnap children and hold them hostage. Well, no, They're adult children. children. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think Fair. that it We're would be We're all effective. children. I mean, true, and and I mean, now that I say that, I guess everybody is somebody's child, and I mean, we've yes. we've and we've, we've killed a lot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very well then. <laughs> Let us. Spend, we are still a few days out from Toddsfeld. We will meet the next several nights to discuss what our plan shall be for actually doing the, doing this. Hopefully, it can be done with as little bloodshed as possible. Are we still set to meet up with the the rest of the irregulars? Indeed we are. Good. Oh, the whole crew. I understand the reputation they have for you and your family, but you need to also understand that these people were working on the commands of my father, and they are now working under my command, and they are good people who were doing their job, and they also represent something that your father hates, which can be used in this situation to better our ends. Yes. Uh, as I said before, I've done all of the calculus. I weighed all of the impacts from everyone, and despite the unpleasantness of uh, your team being responsible for the poisoning and contamination of an entire town, I believe it is the lesser of the evils. Listen, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. I, I understand we were following orders, what I've learned is that I don't have to follow every order if I don't agree with it. Just like the rules state 72. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yes. <laughs> wow. She learns much oh, faster I've already than noted us. it down. I pull out a sheaf of parchment where I have already jotted down the two rules you've read to me. I, I try to get Wrath to remember any of my rules, and he can't. Like, you're amazing. It's not that I can't, it's I choose not to. Yeah, which I guess falls in line with the. Okay, fair. <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah, just, just to be clear, <laughs> I could, but I do not want to. I'm so, I'm so impressed. <laughs> uh, Rudy, I, I want you to know that um, if I ever give you an order that you disagree with... I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I will listen. Mm. You're one of my most trusted advisors, and I'll 
do whatever it takes to do right by you <clears throat> and the rest of you. I just met you, but I will yes, try no, to make that's fair enough. the right choices to not hurt anybody in your family other than your father who needs to stand justice against the crimes that he has endlessly committed. Yes. Yes. Uh, excellent. As long as you continue to appease Bruce, all is, who is, all Bruce? is well. No one. No one. Don't Have you not met him? Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Here is the pamphlet. How to follow Bruce. Um, and, and Bruce reveals himself. He is my familiar cat, but he is also an entity from the place between worlds. He knows everything from everywhere. I am his sworn protector and follower, and he also likes snacks. We've learned it's not just a cat that he randomly talks to. No, it is something is a little bit more, but it's still a bit And weird. has infinite knowledge. Cosmic knowledge. These two have only experienced a fraction of it. They helped me release him from his prison where he was trapped for millennia, and now he has escaped and he is free. They have freed Bruce. They are forever indebted. They will be responsible for the second coming of Bruce. You're making that decision sound worse and worse every time you bring it up. <laughs> Just throwing that out. He I is look, internally grateful. He will remember you at the end. I look down at my lizard. <laughs> Uh, who is just sort of like, his blue tongue is just kind of like half hanging out of his mouth. He's just like chilling. Glyph, you have, uh... You could be doing more, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say to my familiar all the time. And I pull out this like, small owl that's just shaking. His name's Houdini, and he's, uh, oh, no. stands by my side in battle. But I constantly just encourage him to come in and, and do more, but... He I, looks, uh, traumatized. I do feel like through our, it's adventures, all dying. through our adventures, that owl has been, like, its trauma levels are, are high. They're high. It's encountered. He just oh, gains I. experience every time he comes with me into battle, and I encourage him most wholeheartedly to, to help out. Well... <laughs> As the conversation becomes <laughs> friendlier and you get to spend the next several evenings getting to know one another, the, the road weaves ever onward alongside the more rapidly moving Dran River. As the Octonwald breaks to the marshlands, you Travel for another five days or so before you spot the great and monstrous thing that is the city of Toddsfeld. It's a city that at one point might have had a population approaching 100,000 people, but it's now about a third of that because of how much this, this, the city has declined since the Civil War. Nevertheless, the po this the city is partially flooded, and it's built where the river meets the marshlands known as the Elfmire. A huge array of water mills surround this ramshackle city of workshops, furnaces, and mills. Buildings set with high chimneys roll out thick black soot, and all manner of workshops, mills, and water pumps fill the city with this constant thrum of industry. However, you do notice that Toddsfeld is noticeably less active compared to when you visited it last. Rather than the smoke pouring freshly from the chimneys, it is instead this dull smog that hangs and pools over the city itself. Many of the smelters, foundries, and forges are silent as you see pass by your train of soldiers passes by several common folk in wagons fleeing the city with the few belongings that they have. They warily look up at the soldiers of the hooded lanterns and 
carefully make their way out into the countryside to find whatever refuge they can, fearing the battle that is to come. Um, as you get close to Toddsfeld, the smell of the city hangs in your nostrils and makes it unpleasant to breathe for, through your nose. It is that smell of rotting wood, offal, mixed with thick soot, and that metallic dust that hangs around everything here. The people in Toddsfeld, the smog is so dark in the midst of the city that people walk through the boardwalks that have been constructed to replace the streets with lanterns. And the few homes and buildings that are being repaired from the destruction are often built on stilts because without the dam in place, the water flow v regularly shifts and changes. The main landmark that you can still see in the midst of Toddsfeld that hangs just a little bit outside the smog is up on one of the higher hills of the city is the is St. Rosalind's Cathedral where the residents have piled sandbags and made a makeshift wall around the base of the cathedral to stop it from being flooded over its, itself. And so the, the ancient cathedral building um, dedicated to the, the sacred flame, it still is that one beacon of light within the darkness that is Toddsfeld. Now, I've provided you all with uh, a map of the area that you can find in the book, so you can you can check this out. Um, so you can see um, kind of on, on the map where the cathedral is located, as well as the ruins of the dam. Not far from Toddsfeld Dam, um, and where we'll kind of say that you're coming in from is, if you see on the eastern uh, side of the map, there is a road that splits so you're coming in from the east, and there's a road that splits. North of the road is Castle Sodden, and south of the road are the Von Fritz Mines. These are infamous coal mines that reach deep into the earth, and it's a rich mineral vein. But because of the marshlands, the mines constantly flood, and an ingenious array of pumps and pipes have to constantly drain the mine shaft of water and one of the things that you know, know, Ava, is that your father, who owns the mine, has the most callous disregard for the people who work in this mine. So many people have died <laughs> drowning in it because the, the, it, the, the danger of mining in this area because of the water is really, really high, especially with the technology level available to, to the, pe the, the people here and the ramshackle nature of everything. And uh, it's a rich mine, but it's, a, it, it's an absolute meat grinder as far as the people that work there are concerned. A uh, question about that. Was it, was it as dangerous prior to the breaking of the dam or did the breaking of the dam cause it to become? It's always been a dangerous mine, mm -hmm. um, but Everything in Tazfeld has been worse since the dam was destroyed. <laughs> so thanks for that. <laughs> Oops. Uh, we're, we're facing the consequences of your actions. Mm -hmm. I face those consequences every day in my mind and nightmares. Yeah, but now we get to see it. Now we get to it see it in real life. To share my it nightmares. Here, here, so about a mile off the map that I'm showing you here is where the Steel Fangs and the Ochtenwald Irregulars have made an encampment along the road. The campsite that they have made, they have, it is a impromptu military camp with a stake wall, uh, a stake spike wall and several guard towers that they've erected and rows and rows of tents that have been put up. The infamous mercenary companies have equally split the camp for their, de their detachments as well as the incoming Hooded Lantern's soldiers. And so as you enter into the camp, you can see the two different companies, which 
are almost like this, the two sides of savagery in their own respects. The Steel Fangs are an infamous regiment of axe-wielding maniacs that fight like wild dogs. <laughs> and so are the Octonwald Irregulars. Um, although the Octonwald Irregulars, um, as befitting their, their name, are a much more eclectic mix of, of warriors of different skill sets. So whereas the Steel Fangs are far more uniform, fighting much more like a uniform pack, the Octonwald Irregulars are a collection of various different warriors that all garb themselves in different colors and styles and fight with different different weapons. The Steel Fangs are the larger regiment with a couple hundred soldiers, whereas the Irregulars are more like a single platoon. And Rudy, as you enter into this camp, um, the, the first sight that you see are several of your old company crossing their arms, and as they as they see you, there's a cheer that goes up, up, up from them, and they say, "The Red Huntsman is here! Hooray!" And I just go, "Oh, oh! <laughs> it's good to see y'all!" And and with the howls of the irregulars, there's there's an echoing howl from the Steel Fangs as well, and it's. Already, um, the blood-curdling howling of these mercenaries echoes through the through the air as they clang their weapons together in in in, in ex an excitement. Um, one of the first uh, mer uh, mercenaries comes up to you. Uh, um, one of the the druids of the irregulars, a dwarven man that goes by the code name Green Thumbs, and he says, mm -hmm. "Oh, Rudy, it's so good to see you. We had a real hard time of things recently, but it's good to be back in the fight." I've heard some rumors that there was some uh, stuff going on here in Toddsfield, and you know you can can't keep me away from you bunch. Glad to have you back. It is amongst this group that several of our other uh, characters that we had spotlighted not too long ago, uh, Scarlet Fury, Blue Streak, and Yellow Jacket, uh, make a, their cameo appearances. Um, for those that have not watched The Untold Tales, uh, that uh, is, is uh, worth, worth checking out. Um, but just to give an aside, how would those three irregulars react to seeing Rudy? Um. I think it was uh, Scarlet Fury would just bear hug Rudy, and then she'd try to bear hug back, and it would just be a, a we would look like we're fighting, really. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a rough scene. <laughs> I feel like Yellow Jacket comes up to you and does one of those like arm grasping handshakes and like grabs your arm and like nods to you, and it's like, it's a pleasure to have you back. Good to see you. Blue Streak is like, well, it's good that you're not dead yet. <laughs> I agree, but you know, time comes for us all, but it hasn't come to get me yet. Right, not yet, mm. but someday. Someday. Yeah. But I'm glad to see the same hasn't happened to you. Yeah, for now. <laughs> <laughs> One of the uh, other Octonwald regulars, a, a roguish elf known as Violet Tendencies, uh, says, <laughs> <laughs> um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to go the same way, way in that uh, several of us were captured by the Duke and we managed to escape. But the situation's gotten a lot worse. We, when, uh, when Yellow Jacket, Blue Streak, and Scarlet Fury rescued us, mm -hmm. they went in through the water and came in under the fortress. But since then, the water's been a lot more contaminated and we think the Duke might have sealed up the way in. So that that route that we took before, to, we, we were all excited to go in underneath, take him out from the inside, but the Duke's got wise to it. Mm. We're not gonna be able to go in that way again. That's a shame. I was counting on, I was counting on uh, the expertise of the Octonwald Irregulars to, to get us in. Uh, in your, in your time spent here in Toddsfeld, whether you were imprisoned in the facility or during your escape, was there anything that you heard or saw that could give us an edge in taking 
the castle. If I'm being honest, I hate to uh, lose out on a fight. The water in the castle's contaminated. They've only got whatever water they brought in. All we need to do is sit here and let them starve. Well, I don't know. That, they're probably not just the Duke in there that deserves what's coming to them. I think we need to be just a little bit more uh, tactical in the way we approach this. I think there is, we can use that as a measure to strike fear into our enemies, but I think a small group will be infiltrating the castle while we try to pull majority of their forces out using our troops. And the main focus of our smaller group is to find the Duke and assassinate him. The, the, uh, the other uh, irregulars, so one of them speaks up, tell them about the guns! And, I'm sorry, guns? And there's a general commotion as um, Violet Tendencies grimaces and says, yeah, everyone's asking the question who's going to be the cannon fodder for this one because the, the, the Duke's got some sort of academy weapons rigged up on all, on, on all the towers. You can't you can't get within three hundred feet of the of or even more than that of the of the castle without the guns spinning right up. They crack like like lightning and sound like thunder, and they send these big hurtling bombs to, towards you. They blow up. They're, whatever they're shooting at us has some of that those crystals in it. Those those shiny things from Dra Drakenheim blows your blows your rate up and well orange crust that says it turns you into monsters so the castle is shooting delirium at people <laughs> yeah well, at least some sort of contaminated ray Energy. okay is this something is this like a thing that the the, the amethyst academy is just like selling to people there you go just shoot some delirium bombs <laughs> there's there's some knowing glances <laughs> across the uh, across the academy members, but yes, the academy has developed a delirium powered weaponry, uh, including delirium powered explosives. Oh, and, and let's all argue with Wilhelm, who says delirium is bad and we should get rid <laughs> of it. Well, well, it's so helpful. We can use the funds to save the people that it hurts. It's a win-win. No, that's a lose-win. Oh. Well, I'm not really great at chess. <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> um, I think that this changes the, the strategy then. I think before the assassination, there's stages that need to occur. We will need a distraction, which is going to be a problem. We Somebody needs to be brave enough to try to draw the fire of those cannons well our small team dismantles the guns we need to hit the walls first dismantle the guns and open hmm. their gates before heading in for the assassination it sounds like a bit of a strategic meeting is happening now so as you move from the camp to the command tent that has been set up right um Rickard Steelfang, the leader of the uh, of the Steelfangs, comes into the tent. Elias Drexel, as well as Eldrick Runeweaver, River, are all present, as well as Petra and some members of the Hooded Lanterns and the the soldiers who represent the artillery sent by the Duke of Dransmond. Which, unfortunately, one of the first things is that the artillery that Dransman descent is outranged by the academy artillery. Mm. So the the artillery, in order for it to set up, it would have to set up under the fire of of the castle guns. I mean, simplest solution, Ava. You're a high-ranking member of the academy, ex expert wizard, from my understanding, correct? Yes. 
So Ava makes the guns disappear. Just use your magic, they'll go away, and then we storm the gates. This is the problem we always have. It's so frustrating. Yeah, that's, um, I don't, if there's a way for me to do that, I have not discovered it yet. (laughs) But all, all knowledge is possible, perhaps with a few months of research. Can you summon a larger gun? Uh, summon guns is not a, a spell I've learned. Hmm. Uh, although I am, you know, a, an abjuration wizard, so that's not really my thing. Maybe do you know something about these guns? Maybe the, the weak points or something? Here's the problem. My area of research was uh, I was researching the effects of and the prevention of contamination. So I was in a whole other department. Uh, you know, the people working on these kinds of things, just people that I might see at lunch sometimes, not not so much. <laughs> Wait. Protection from contamination. Protection from the what's happening from the guns. If the guns are turning people into monsters, that's the outcome of contamination. And is, it, is that like delirium is just doing very fast contamination? Is that the... Delirium is contamination. But like when it explodes, it just rapidly contaminates? Um, yes. There, you, you would have knowledge that the Academy has made delir- like one of the first things that was made with delirium was just, what happens if you use a, del- a delirium crystal as a power source for a magic sword? And those types of magic swords cause wounds that bring, like essentially, the amount of content, like if you were just sitting in a room with delirium or in Drakenheim, a person can be in the the ruins for a couple hours before they start to feel sick from it. Whereas a contaminated weapon is just a focused blast of it. So right. like if a, it doesn't like a radium lipstick situation, yeah, where you're like yeah, just too, yeah, just too much, right? And so um, t- to explain, um, contamination works in six levels, mm-hmm. and so someone in, walking around in Drakenheim can be fine for like a day in the city and not really, like they have to leave after a day, but that's it. In some of the more dangerous areas, it's about an hour. Whereas delirium based weapons, you're getting, a, uh, you could be getting a level of contamination every time you're hit with them. Okay. And some of these really potent weapons, we have a couple spells that can do 1d4 levels of contamination in a single hit. So these can be dangerous. And the other thing is that when someone transforms into a monster with delirium, what they become is completely unpredictable. A, a common foot soldier could transform into a massive monstrosity capable of destroying an entire regiment. Where And they're completely like, you go mad, you're uncontrollable at, at that point. So the, the results of what happens when someone is contaminated is completely unpredictable. Okay, here's what I, I am the uh, inventor of a spell called Neutralizing Field uh, for one hour, I can prevent anyone in this field from gaining contamination levels. However, it won't protect anyone against, you know, the, the damage associated with an explosive. Mm-hmm. So, uh, side effects uh, of the delirium, we can handle. But, I mean, it's it's artillery. I, I can't defend against that at the same time. Now, do we know how many guns they have? Elias Drexel pulls up some maps. Mm-hmm and a tactical situation, and he explains. Castle Sodden would otherwise be considered a pretty weak fortification. It's practically sinking into the swamp, but the Duke has seen fit to conduct several repairs and outfit all of the towers with several of these weapons, as well as conventional ballistas and other cannons. The soldiers that we, we've seen that Von Fritz has pulled back all of the guards of the city and has assigned a contingent of soldiers to protect the mine over the city itself. Mm. And this, the mines have also been fortified with defenses to protect them. What is he doing in the mines? What is he doing? What Meanwhile, what is he doing in the mines? We. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Thank you. Between the Hooded Lanterns, the Irregulars, we have about a thousand troops, which is not a lot for a siege. Normally, 
Um, Castle Sodden, despite how its state is still a defensive fortification, where defenders have a 20 to one advantage. We could, they, we, uh, we estimate that they could have a couple, only a couple hundred troops. We probably outnumber um, number them 10 to one, but it's the type of situation where if I was directly attacking, I would want to have 20 to one. And with the type of artillery that they, they have, this is, this is not a great situation. So we are going to need to do an elite strike. The, this is compounded by the fact that right now the people in Toddsfeld are completely undefended and they are refusing to give us supplies. What clean water is available in the area, what clean and uncontaminated food is available in the area to even feed our own soldiers and supply our own soldiers, we need to adjust the situation if we want to go into a siege or we need to strike fast. I think one of the first things we need to do, so I'm, I'm starting to see several layers here. First of all, I want us to try to persuade the people of Toddsfeld that we are here to help. Their situation isn't great, and it hasn't been for a long time. My goal with Toddsfeld is to improve the situation here and turn it back into a functioning mining city. I want to rebuild the dam. I want to bring this up to an operational speed again, and it's not going to happen under Ludwig von Fritz. Uh, Rickard Steelfang speaks up. The gruff soldier strokes his beard and says, there's something else that I'm really worried about now, and I don't really know how to describe this one, but a bunch of my men been having nightmares for the past couple of weeks around here. Scared of the upcoming battle record? No, they've been... A bunch of them have been saying that they've been having strange dreams of something, something kind of getting inside their heads and, and like, like they're talking about their brains being pulled out through their noses and they're in these nightmares. And every day I've had about one or two walk off. We are near the Elvenmire wetlands. There is also the report of the great creature. And we don't know what Everett Freed's been doing mixing with this. Does the, is this a thing that, like, is there ever a side effect like this of contamination or is this just completely unrelated to that? Give me an arcana check. <gasps> Where the heckity is that? Oh, skills. Got it. It's fine. Okay. Arcana. What? Sorry. I'm not used to using an iPad. Full screen. <laughs> Arcana. All right, here we go. Here we go. It's happening. It's happening. First die roll for the first character. roll. Uh, that would be a 26. Ooh. Okay. More specifically, creatures that are contaminated and humans that become contaminated monsters, in some cases, they can, they, in most cases, they become just gibbering, uh, gibbering, insane monstrosities. But there have been instances where, particularly people who are capable of powerful spell casting, that research, and you know this as someone who's researched contaminated magic, a lot of people think that they can control contamination and use it, and don't realize that they've already been become fully contaminated, and because it's vastly increased their magical abilities at the cost of their sanity, but not their lucidity. So they may maintain their intelligence, their cunning, but they are utterly corrupt, and even the most intelligent contaminated individuals who are who have become monsters the trait that they all take on is a compulsion to contaminate others rabies <laughs> like rabies <laughs> so the capabilities of an intelligent being who becomes contaminated can vary but the urge to contaminate others is 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 something that 
in studying contaminated creatures, that, that's the most insidious thing about it, is that they, they all have this compulsion, just like undead creatures have the compulsion to devour the living and thus create more undead. Contaminated creatures are driven by, almost by a desire to contaminate others. It's possible that this is the effect of an intelligent, magical creature who has uh, is, is attempting to weaponize their contamination in a subtler way than a monster might. This leads me to believe we, we've had interactions with both the people of Ash Bay that were transformed by the Duchess into fish monsters who tried to offer us some slime that would also turn us into fish people. It was a whole thing. Fascinating. Uh, there was also the Schaffberg incident, where we arrived in Schaffberg, also near the Alvinmeyer wetlands, and all the people there were being mind controlled by creatures deeper in the swamp. Both of which are in relatively the same proximity to Toddsfeld. So we have multiple indications of creatures that we faced before that have dealt with mind control and manipulation in this area. We also know that Everett Freed is nearby, and last we knew, Everett Freed had the corpse of the Duchess and was experimenting on it before mm -hmm. it escaped. Mm -hmm. There is a chance that your father might be also manipulated. Oh, yes, I would say that's more than a chance. I mean, he was always mean. I'm trying to say not, yes. like not too many words here. Um, he was not a nice person, ever, but there's a chance that if there are other entities in control here, that he is not working of his own volition. I will say he has been a man easily influenced by others, uh, especially of late, and one of the things that I think has really tipped the balance of what I think um, can be done even with him, is that his contamination at this point has reached levels that I believe he's no longer acting in his right mind, if his mind could ever be considered right. And correct me if I'm wrong, when we met him, he was contaminated visually. Your, when you did meet him, which was almost over a year ago, mm -hmm. right, in terms of the amount of time that has passed, people in, in this region are showing signs of contamination and mutation, mm -hmm. and it's in the water. And so if he has allowed himself to become increasingly contaminated, if he's, it begs the question, when was the last time you saw your father? I, th I feel like probably it would have been maybe a few months ago that I s mm. realized that, that I basically realized he was beyond my help. Hmm. I have been researching contamination for my entire career, and it has always been my hope that I could reverse what's happening to him, and that perhaps somewhere behind all of that contamination was a person who could be changed or reasoned with. But the last time I saw him several months ago, it seems like that the possibility of that time has passed. Not even my extensive years of research can can do anything to stop where he is now and he has always rejected my all of my attempts to help him in this way he has turned to the wrong voices for his information about contamination and i have no doubt that they've uh hastened his descent hmm. he might even be leaning into it encouraging it as we've seen others do once they get a taste of contamination and as we have said about delirium as a weapon, people are willing to engage with terrible things if they believe it will give them more power. And if there's one thing that my father has always valued above all else, it's access to power. Mm. I think right now all that we have is assumptions based on the nightmares of some of our troops. It's not enough to draw accurate conclusions. We don't have all the pieces in play yet. It is something that I don't think we should avoid. Um, 
we should we should take that into deep consideration. But I think our plans stay the same. I think that this is a multi-stage mm -hmm. mission now, and we may have just peeled back yet another layer that needs to be investigated. Elias Drexel asks, so what is your first move? Do we go right for the keep? Do we try to offer parlay? Do we investigate the mines? Or do we head to Toddsfeld and see if we can reason with the people there? I think the first step, and I'm open to all of your input, but I believe it would be wise to secure the city of Toddsfeld, which is separate from Castle Sodden. They are separated by distance, by the contaminated water, by, by many elements. And again, the Duke of Toddsfeld has never put much effort into caring for the people here. I know that they're scared and that they are unwilling to give us supplies, probably out of fear of the battle that's going to happen. We should let them know our intentions are to find new leadership for this city and to rebuild it, offer them safer homes and a place to live. Perhaps just this simple act will prove to the people of Todd's felt that they should be backing us. Perhaps then the first person you should speak with is the High Flamekeeper at St. Rosalind's. Flamekeeper Irma, I believe, is her name. She might be the one who can at least speak to the rest of the people of Toddsfeld, and hopefully, if you can convince her, you can convince the rest of the people of Toddsfeld that you're, that you mean them no harm. The trickier part comes after that with these cannons, these uh, eldritch cannons. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to be dismantled. We, as much as in a war, it is assumed that people are going to die and I assume no less here, but we can't necessarily afford what is a small force that we have to have even a few people turned into monstrosities that could shift the entire tides of this thing simply from being hit with those Eldritch Cannons. We need those dismantled. Rickard Steelfang leans back in his, in his seat and says, of course, in the Steel Fangs, we all know that uh, every one of us that goes down just means more spoils for the rest that are still alive. So you don't have to be too precious with us. All the all the Steel Fangs have know what we've signed up for. They got nerves of steel. That's well, what they call them, the Steel Fangs. Rickard, it may sound to me like you volunteered to be our distraction. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to have to draw the fire of the walls so that another group of us can go up and dismantle those cannons. Now, is there being something supplied by the mines for those cannons, though? I agree. It might be worth a act of good faith to release those in the mines. Start there. Hmm. Show the people of Toddsfeld that you do care and that it's not just words, it is actions. Elias says, fortunately for us, we already se sever by our mere presence any transportation by ground between the mines and the castle. If there is any sort of underground connection between those two, we haven't seen any evidence, evidence for that. Uh, I think that for the most part in the castle, what supplies they have are the supplies that they have. We haven't been, we haven't, we've allowed nothing to come through. So they are at least cut off from one another at least by, by our mere presence. Are there people in the mines right now that we need to get out of there? All we know is that the, the entrance to the mines has had a makeshift barricade built around it and that several of these soldiers that the Duke has procured are stationed there. So he is protecting something. It might not be townspeople that are in there still. He's protecting something. Do we do we know about the creatures that uh, Pluto and oh you saw them, the burrowers that yes. Everett Freed had? Oh, yeah. We don't know if they're here. Everett Freed had access to some creatures that could burrow at incredible speed. Alarming, right? It was what they used to uh, 
capture the students in Altbrook. I think if they're getting a little they had bit a network of tunnels protective of that mine, there might be a good reason that that might be mm. where the it could be easily that yes aren't are going in. We don't we don't have much knowledge about what's been done down there. So we have the Duke possibly in the castle that we need to get rid of. We have Eldritch cannons on the castle walls that need to be dismantled. We have something being protected in the mines that needs to be investigated. And townsfolk that refuse to assist because they're suffering. So what order? I, I think the townsfolk is the easiest one to tackle first, but then from there it's either we take on the castle and then investigate the mine, or we investigate the mine and then take on the castle. Rationally speaking, if the mine is being guarded more closely than the castle, that suggests that whatever is contained in the mine is more important than whatever is contained in the castle. The castle's defenses are better. Okay. Yeah, the, the castle's the thing with the cannons. But the mine is being protected in a way that outs, that is unique. It's yes. not being protected because of the value of the mining within. Yes, I, I would, my suggestion would be to attack the mine first, free it, and potentially find a connection between the mine and the castle. And my my only concern with that is that if people decide for some reason to get brave and rise up, we've got a civilian army at our back. And that could be taking chances that we can't afford to have. I think we, we address the civilians, then perhaps the mine is the next step. What, what we'll want to do is we'll want to ensure, once we've gained the trust of the people of Totsfeld, that supplies stop going to the castle. We can then occupy the area around the castle, not within cannon range, but just to se- secure, make them know that they can't go anywhere. Basically, trap them in the castle. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, we can investigate the mines, see what von Fritz is hiding in there, mm. and perhaps uncover, I don't know what he would have in the mines, but I imagine if he's protecting it, it's some sort of secret weapon that he plans to use against us. Could be, could mm. be a hideout for his troops, could even be where the nightmares are coming from, or where Everett Freed's operations are working out of. Mm. Yes. Uh, if, he's, if he's created burrowing creatures before, that might make sense as a workspace. An underground, an area with underground access that is of a distance to the castle where travel underground would allow him to get to and from it easily. Mm. So we stop all traffic to and from the castle, and then we investigate the mines while our troops hold steady and once we've solved what's in the mines, we take the castle. Do any of our wizard ranks know how to... I know that creating ores is a very challenging spell, but what about food and water? That is uh, something that clerics of the Sacred Flame are much more proficient at doing than mages of the Academy. We can scarcely provide enough with ma- and for providing food for an entire force. It's a little bit more than what we can provide. Wasn't Ophelia Reed going to join us at some point? That was suggested. Does not seem like she's arrived yet. Because mm. it could also be not for us, but for the townsfolk. I was I was hoping that yeah. we could use some of our funds to to help the townsfolk of Tonsfield. The but- the, again, T- Tazville is not a town. It is a city of almost 40,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. So feeding people with with magic, there's not... I, I, I don't want us to get the, the, diverted with that. There are not enough spellcasters to feed even your own army. Yeah. Now, yeah. Ava, you've been studying contamination. You said you've been trying to figure out a way to get it out. Is there anything you've come up with that you can clear some sort of water, you know, of contamination or...? Unfortunately, the area of research that I have been most successful in is that of prevention of mm-hmm. contamination. All right. The removal, significantly more difficult, not something I've cracked yet. Mm. You do know the spell Purge Contamination. Oh, nice. Um, which I do know one spell that purges <laughs> contamination. It, it is a, just, to, just so that we're, you're aware, 
it's the spell trades contamination levels for exhaustion levels. Mm. Uh, so it's it's a pretty brutal process on the body. Right, and if you're, is it one to one ratio? Yeah. So if you're highly contaminated, that yeah. Yeah, yeah, it can still, it can actually kill you. <laughs> but it's better it than the other thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, very well then, it sounds like the first place that you want to head to is town. I think so. How, the big question for me is, how in force do you want to go? I think our group, Light. Yeah. plus like Ansem, Petra maybe, and a few from each group, like maybe. Uh, so like, I, I'm hearing like a, a less than 50 people. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. A, like a 10, like a strong group of 10 very powerful looking people to go into town to talk to the uh, okay. flame keeper. What about bringing some supplies? True. Um, blankets. Okay, perhaps there's a core 10, but and then there's also, um, if we could, oh, if we to, could. To be clear, the yeah. town has supplies. Yeah. The town can supply itself. What about gifts? Um, Do they it, have any gifts? It's your forces that need supplies. Mm. Oh, man. Yeah. So we need to steal it from them. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah. capture the town. We hold a strangle. <laughs> we strangle them out of their resource. You're not in, in any right. case, you're as you head... No, Raph, you're on the right track. It's just we're doing it with kindness. We're going Strangle to... Strangle them with kindness. Got we're it. We're persuading okay. them to offer us supplies. Well, as the group of you head them. towards Totsfeld, I need you to all roll me a d6. Oh. I will control their minds. And... I can't believe that I could have cast a third level spell on my father at any time and just removed his contamination <laughs> and he just wouldn't let me. <laughs> what a nightmare. Look at that. Two. One. Oh. Two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do the rubbing hands thing. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Oh, God. I'm so scared. <laughs> You know about the D6s, right? Mm -mm. Oh, it's great. This is a great time to tell you about it's it. Good time. <laughs> uh, so Monty, when he has you roll a D6, it's it's basically the we don't know the total encounter. understanding. It's, I know. it's essentially the random encounter or like Careful deciding by. on how what oh, no. what a situation is going to come out as. Any ones that are rolled are bad. Any oh. sixes that are rolled are good. So ones and two, all ones and twos, not great. Yeah, in theory, and like a six and a one can be like sort of this mixed bag yeah. of results. Oh, do we want to I actually, I can probably confidently tell you, I've rolled about seven ones in a row on this thing. It is haunting me. You rolled the one, didn't you? Hopefully. Yeah, I did. You stride through the ramshackle city of Toddsfeld across bridges and boardwalks that have been haphazardly constructed across the flooding water that is slowly eroding away at the city. You pass crumbling buildings and abandoned homes that once held families, businesses, shops, and prosperous industry. And as, as you do, many of the common folk close their shutters, some boo or hiss, uh, and an errant tomato is thrown. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> See, they're already offering supplies. <laughs> <laughs> they have been wooed. <laughs> I'm think, doing it. I think uh, this may have the opposite meaning in in, mm. in terms. Not enough. Oh, really? Sound. In, um, yeah. In in Kesselholm, throwing tomatoes was a sign that of of offering. Uh, oh, no. You threw tomatoes. To offer them to the king. Yeah, I don't think that. I think you still. Wait, is that not what they were doing to my father? <laughs> no. We would travel a lot, and people would. And he, no. As you come down the bend towards Saint Rosalind's Cathedral, many of the common folk do not dare approach near you. They instead keep to their own business. But one figure clad in, at first, what you think might be a hooded lantern meeting you. They're wearing a green robe, but you very quickly realize that they are not. It is just a muddy, green, burlap robe that they have draped over themselves. And Wilhelm, with your perception, 
you can immediately see that this figure is heavily armored, wearing plate, except they are not, it is not plate that they are wearing. They are made of the plate. <gasps> they are the plate. It is one of the guardian constructs that assaulted you not long ago. These are the assassination robots. Yes, it is one of them. We just like keep letting them <laughs> come just, right up to you. Go shake his hand again. That, that, right. that always worked out really well. <laughs> yeah. As you, like right in front of him. Yep, just place it right, right in, 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 this, in the midst there. Um, Squint it, your one eye. As, <laughs> wait a second. As you come up towards it on, on the street, it drops a, a blade in the ground, takes the cloak off, and you can see the construct its constructed nature. It is a, a wooden frame, a wooden and stove frame built over metal armor with a clockwork head and large, um, large sort of glass lenses for eyes and a piece of delirium po powering it at its core. And the construct stops as it sees you locks its lenses upon you, and its head opens up uh -oh. from two sides. And it begins emitting a high-pitched whine, <gasps> almost like a siren. Oh, no. <laughs> and that is when you hear it. In the distance where Castle Sodden stands, you hear a thunderous crash of the guns firing. It seems their range is far longer than was originally anticipated, as you hear the sound of the cannons blasting out, and you hear the whistling bombardment sailing towards Toddsfeld no. itself. <gasps> Roll for initiative. But the oh people, <laughs> the people. Bombing his own citizens? Oh, this guy sucks. He sucks. Oh, oh wait, I got it. Oh. <laughs> Wilhelm? 24. 24 for Willie. Ava? 12. 12 for Ava, okay. 20. 20 for Rudy? Eight. Right. Thank you. I'm there. You're whistling, so you don't hear the whistling. Okay. He's trying to match the pitch. Yeah. Is that me? I'm easily distracted. The bombardment lands at the end of each round. Oh. Oh no. Here they come, that loud whistling noise as the contaminated ammunition attracted by the piercing noise from the soldier mm. is sent in your direction. What do you do? Who goes first? Wilhelm. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm going to run up and try to stop this whistle bot. Okay. Um, with my new cool sword, so unsheathing Varenthorn, mm. the crown blade. I've never used it before. I charge towards the creature and try to cut off its open head. Okay, give um, me the attack. Uh, that's gonna be a 23 to hit. It is a hit. And I'm one-on-one -on -one with this creature. You are. You've given me a weapon that does so much dice counting. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, hearing that. Yeah, it's a big shake. 47 oh. damage. Oh. Yeah. With a crash, Varenthorn slams into the face of this creature. And that moment where the, the siren just kind of winces of the wow, <laughs> as, as it goes out of, out of, out of focus, and the, the, the construct stumbles backward 
as whatever fluid pumps through its body begins leaking from the wound that you inflicted upon it. It's still standing? It's still standing. Well, this weapon also gives me extra attack. Uh, so I get a uh, 20, no, third, I hit. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't sneak attack again, so we're just doing 48 damage. 30, 30 damage? Yeah. The creature collapses, destroyed by, by your attack. So, so Wilhelm runs in as the sirens are whistling and first like smashes the siren and then finishes the blow. The, the head floats down, crashes, and flies off, crashes, over. and the sound stops. But of course, the, the shots are still fly, flying. I turn and I'm like, we're fine. <laughs> you say, as the people around you in the streets begin screaming. Oh my god. Ava, it is your turn. What are you going to do? Wait, really? What did you get, 20? No, no. I mean, like 13. Oh, I got you, I got you <laughs> mixed up. I'm so oh, sorry. Wow. Rudy, Rudy is 20. Rudy. Um, so since I see the bot <laughs> go down, um, I just yell out to all the soldiers with us, Cover the townspeople! And I want to run towards the closest town, or actually the furthest town person I can, and start to like try to get them to safety. Okay. What I consider to be Alrighty. somewhat safety. Um, um, I'm going to basically say you're going to grapple the closest town's person that you can see. All right. Uh, or, or the furthest. Yeah, that one. Okay. And give me an athletics check. Uh, I crit, so tw- 32. You throw them, you, you, throw, you grab them, hurl them to the ground, and you, you see almost like a cellar door that you, uh, you notice the, the, the building beside you, the cracking open the doorway there. Um, there is a cellar that you could direct, start directing people towards for p- potential safety. And I just start, yeah, like waving people over and, okay. and trying to get them down. Ava. So, real quick, does Dispel Magic do anything to Delirium? Um, it depends on the circumstances. But it, like, if I dispelled like the missile, that would not prevent it from contaminating. You know what? I think that's smart enough that if you want to ready an action to try to dispel one of the bombs coming down and basically diffuse it before it goes off, I think. Do we have an idea of how many missiles are headed our way? We're going to roll to find out. Oh God. Okay. But, so then. But I would allow you, but if you want to ready an action, uh, you'll get your, what I'll, what I'll do is, if you want to ready an action, mm-hmm. I'll give you a perception check, and on a success, I'll tell you how many are coming now, and you'll be able to choose which one you want to, and we'll determine which where, where they are gonna land. Ooh, that's terrible. So you can choose it, what you want to stop. Okay. Yeah, I would like to do that. Okay, give me a perception check. Okay, perception. Uh, or uh, um, you're calculating enough, and you're. And I feel like um, Ava's map. Bad for me. I feel like in you could use investigation Much if you better. if you like to, to like actually you're seeing the 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 missiles coming in and the trajectory is already being like, calculated in, in your mind. Yeah, yeah. 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 like all the math <laughs> figures. <laughs> <laughs> That is oh, the, the, the dispelment. An 18. Okay. Roll me a d4. Four. Four missiles are going to land uh, here. Cool. They're Love all it. going to be explosions of this size. Oh, Ooh. God. <laughs> Not the goats. Oh, no. Honestly, yes, the goats. If we're going to, if, if we have to choose which missile. <laughs> okay, but then you're going to be fighting a giant contaminated goat monster yeah, in a minute, and true. you're going to regret that. Yeah. Okay. Well, if it's between. A giant contaminated goat monster or a bunch of people getting turned into contaminated well, monsters. Well, that's true. That's fair. But also the supplies. So. <laughs> you only have so many supplies. The goat meat. Now what I'm going to do is notice how my... want to notice that goat. Notice how the, the area is divided into kind of four quadrants. Mm-hmm. I'm going to roll a d4 for to see where each one lands. Okay. Oh, God. So... Uh, three of them, the the missiles are actually all going to land on those two buildings. On the big. These? Oh, no, the, the bu- ones by no! by Wilhelm. Oh. Three are going to land there, there, and the other is going to uh, land uh, on the goats. No. <laughs> I 
I mean, I <laughs> just to avoid the donkey at least. Um, and, and yeah, so they all kind of land within that air, air, those, those those areas, but they're not. It's not happening yet. It's the, okay. it, there's a, a turn still before, but you've managed to see see this, and yes, you could dispel one of these before one it goes off. Great, love it. Save the go. Uh, I honestly think I will pick this quadrant because if I stop one of the three that's landing here, there's still two that could t- contaminate the people in there. Mm. Whereas if I stop this one, it limits the contamination to one area. Mm. Okay, so that's great, great thought. Yeah. Rath, what are you gonna do? Um, I'm gonna brace myself for the incoming thing, um, but I want to cast telekinesis and try to stop one of the bombs. Mm. Okay. Alrighty. So in that case- I'm gonna try to play catch. (laughs) Play play catch with it? So I never had to play with my dad. The round ends. The whistling bombardment uh, of these essentially delirium cannonballs sounds towards you and four of them are landing in in your your area. So, I'm going to say that both Dispel Magic and Telekinesis, you both cast the spell and you're both automatically able to disarm one of them and it lands in the water with a thud. <laughs> um, and your Wrath, you're able to grab one telekinetically, basically just before it hits you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and then I want to send it up and then let it explode harmlessly? Harmlessly. <laughs> Harmlessly in the in the air. A bird happens to be flying by. Giant giant. contaminated (laughs) eagle. The other two, however, crash into the buildings over here. That I'm pushing people in. Is uh, there's two people that I've been Don't worry, you'll be safe in here. So there's there's three people in harm's way. They're in the cellar. I hope the people in the cellar are okay, but there are three people. There's three people. In the one building, there's two in between the, these buildings and one on the balcony over here. And there's right. this guy over here. He's chilling. Yeah, yeah sounds like everyone gets to roll a saving throw for a civilian. Oh god. <laughs> oh no. What is the? Just roll the d20 and tell me what you get. <gasps> Sixteen. I got a twenty. Eighteen. Three. <laughs> okay, so four of the civilians are so able. To, three of them are able to dive to safety. Well, one dives basically into the the moving projectile, and it crashes into the building with a resonant explosion. <laughs> Does it still have a roof? Oh, no. I don't think so. No. Oh, no. Oh. Wow, real time <laughs> terrain adjustment. No! Oh, sad. Was and it so, like a house or like a butcher shop? Like, what was that? So these people are safe. I, Do you move them though? Or I don't they know. Stay there? I feel like they dove out of the way. Mm. Into the cellar. <laughs> Yeah, maybe into the It house. probably just missed them. <laughs> they didn't do anything. They just got. Oh! oh fire. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Is this too overboard? So cool! <laughs> it's amazing. No! Water spells? <laughs> no, I guess they're not alive. <laughs> can I, I can make a boat. Uh, so these, <laughs> the, these, these three people survived. But this person has been, yeah, it's best, uh, fate best left unmentioned. Oh god. Okay, but they're not transforming into a horrible monster, so we're- Not necessarily, roll a d6. Uh, that was your first five. Uh, you do not see what is what fate befalls them, but you see there were four people in that area, and only three people have run from run for safety oh. as the the weaponry co- crashes into the building, sending parts of it collapsing and damaging the building that Rudy was rushing people into. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I'm reassessing the situation. At the top of the round. I pulled them out of the cell. I will have you all roll me another d6. Oh, no. Four. One. Three. Oh. Three. Okay. There is a shuddering in the nearby river. What? Uh, as a, a creature goat. begins emerging. First, you see a reptilian nose poke its head up from the water followed by another reptilian head, warped and 
somehow familiar. The, these long serpentine necks emerge up from the water. And as they emerge, you can see the thick bolts and stitches, the tanks and hoses, and bits of alchemical material and parts that have been lashed onto the necks and the body of this very familiar looking hydra. What? Oh, huh? No. This hydra kill, almost killed me. Almost. In a, in a, in a, in a, ah! Oh, God! <laughs> a reanimated version of the hydra that almost killed Wilhelm emerges what? up from the water with the augmentations of Everett Freed added onto its body. What, what, is he just going around <laughs> collecting monsters that almost killed me? Yeah. <laughs> I was yes. just thinking that. I was that's like, what I would do if I were your enemy. Yeah, that's a really good smart, smart play. How long has he been our enemy? <laughs> he really doesn't like you. As this thing's right, Wilhelm's just like, come on. <laughs> Seriously. As you kill the robot, you turn around and you see the hydra. Give me a perception check, Wilhelm. Um, <laughs> oh, no. uh, five, which means 10, which means 15. Everett Freed's added a lot of other creatures, and you would assume that this is about 50% Hydra, 50% like other stuff. So it begs the question, what did Everett Freed do with the rest of it? Also, like I cut off that head, but now it's back, but it's a different animal, and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> All right, so my I'm gonna add my King Killer Hydra to the initiative world. Oh, oh come yeah. on! Great name. <laughs> yeah, that's an awesome name. I like. I just have yeah. Great. Does it wear? Is it? Is it? Does it have like a tag? <laughs> Because it's a pet. It like rises out, it's like tag flip, and I just catch a glimpse, I'm like, King Kill? Really? Now, I, definitely for you. Alrighty. Like with that, person. we go to the top of the round with Wilhelm. Okay, the last time I faced this Hydra, I went first, <laughs> and I ran up to it to attack it, and it didn't go well. You survived, so if anything. I take Varenthorn, and I swing it towards the Hydra from a distance, sending out a spectral version of the blade spinning. Because I can do that. Cool. Um, I love this new sword. This is great. <laughs> and so I'm going to attack. What's the range on my spectral? Uh, 30 feet. I'm going to just climb up on this rock here. And, yeah, swing my blade towards the Hydra, uh, sending a spectral beam uh, getting uh, 30 to hit. Uh, that's gonna do it. <laughs> the Hydra, is it based with any, it looks like it's based with the Hooded Lantern. Are you gonna count that? Um, Houdini, sir. Houdini is, there's Houdini, there's a Hooded sure, Lantern. Sure, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll count it. Oh, I wonder no. how many other casualties we're gonna have. Well, no. <laughs> one Hooded Lantern in exchange for 8d6 extra damage. Or Houdini. Or Houdini. <laughs> Um, Listen, he has to contribute to this battle, okay? Don't worry, guys. I've got it! Maybe. Um, 52 damage. Whew. Yeah! Alrighty. The uh, creature howls out um, as the, the spinning blade slices one of its heads off. And then... No! I... S I didn't learn my lesson, okay? I was too busy getting eaten that I don't actually know how to kill the Hydra, so I, I'm, I'm swinging it again. Another spectral blade. Oh, that was so close. Rolled a 19. Um, and so that's going to hit as well. Okay. Uh, for 19 damage. That was a, All right. not a great roll. As the spectral blades cut into the body of the King Killer Hydra, its acidic blood sprays out in a mist all around it, and the civilian and the goats beside it no! um, melt. No! <laughs> Wait, the, all of them? The goats too? And, and, and every, the everything pig within five killers. feet of uh, uh, each, each the man, but not the pig. Oh, each the time one. the King Killer Hydra takes damage, 
everything within five feet of it takes 3d6 acid damage. Is the is this Hooded Lantern okay? Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, no. no. Is Houdini okay? Uh, no. Aww. Does you get hazard pay at least? <laughs> no. <laughs> We're not compensating you for that. I suddenly understand why that owl looks so traumatized. <laughs> As sprays of, 30 a, years of, this of this. acidic blood. And the head that's been, just been cut off, it's just a, a gout of this <gasps> Acidic blood that is just spraying everywhere, and the hooded lantern turns around and goes, "No, my king!" And then just melts, and the flesh falls off. Jeremy! <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Our trusted Jeremy. Oh Jeremy! He played the flute so well. <laughs> the eulogy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll so is that, a, that everything, Wilhelm? Uh, yeah, I think that was a good turn. Or do you turn. want to do any more damage? Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess as a bonus action, I can still shoot it. Uh, you, you did. You did. You, oh, it's the yeah. bonus action. It's yeah. not extra attack. Yeah, it's, it's a, a bonus yeah. action extra yeah. attack. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to use my legendary action to do a trampling charge. <gasps> oh! Uh, so, yeah, um, it does a trampling charge directly towards Wilhelm, uh, and it crashes over uh, Ava and uh, um, Rise in the process. Enough? Am I far enough away? Uh, it's gonna sweep over you in the process, so <laughs> it kind of lunges out of the water and bounds forward and then does that sort of slide across the ground as, as it almost had the momentum coming out of the water that it pointed itself in the wrong direction and it corrects itself to move almost like a seeking missile. Almost all the heads in unison realize that they overshot and they turn towards Wilhelm. Right, imagine your loss in depth perception when you lose a few eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Um, so it gets to make stomp attacks against everyone. Everybody that it that it oh, went okay. through. So this is a plus thirteen. Does to that hit. include me? Yeah. Oh, cool. Can I invoke my entropic ward for disadvantage? Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna need it. <laughs> What's your AC? Okay. Twenty one. Oh yeah, you really improved your AC. Uh, yeah. Well, the seventeen. So yes. no. So Rudy, uh, I get a twenty seven against you, Rudy. Rudy. Oh no, not Rudy. Sorry, I get a twenty seven against Ava. Oh well, then I won't bother casting shield. And I get a twenty seven against Wilhelm. Oh well, then I won't bother. <laughs> I, I just won't bother. Um, it crashes into you both. Uh, you take 20 bludgeoning damage, and I need strength saves. I forgot to give an inspiring speech. I didn't <laughs> see that being needed in the town. Can I, um, we'll need it after. I Can I use my reaction for silvery barbs against the one against Wilhelm? Sure. Uh, 25. Still hit. <laughs> Good try. But, strength hold on, wait. Yeah. And that's Great. before... Okay, um, I'm gonna use the other part of Silvery Barbs to give Wilhelm advantage on his next attack, ability check, or saving throw. Oh, cool, Within Thank one you. minute. <laughs> um, I mean, thanks for all of this. I'm probably still gonna a, a saving throw on strength, though. Yeah? Yeah, no, I'm about to re-roll it, but oh, okay. I'm okay. just, I have a minus one to strength. What do we get for saving throws? Nine. <sighs> I got a two, so minus one for a one. Okay. Yeah, you, 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 you saved so me the, the King it's Killer really Hydra crashes into both of you, uh, and you are both knocked prone. Ugh. Off my rock. No! Uh, so that was its legendary action. So uh, we now go to um, Rudy. Oh, this thing has it out for me. <laughs> it's the um. <laughs> Okay, so I am gonna get my way up to it. <clears throat> Actually, before I do that, is there anybody in my way? Uh, I don't have depth perception. I am one person, person in my way. way. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, then I will, uh, <clears throat> where's the fire? I'm gonna fireball it, but fireball it from the side where mm. maybe the pig gets roasted. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Nice. Pork chops. Um, roasted pig. So uh, it is a... I prefer slice and fries. Dex saving throw? A uh, dexterity saving throw? 14. Um, I uh, get... I get a 10. Nice. Oh, so it hits. Fire burns. One, two, three, four, five. Eight, 
27 fire damage. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> and I'm gonna use my action surge. Nice. Which to, you can teleport Which with. I can teleport right in front of it. Okay. Because I want to put myself between it and Wilhelm, even though it can charge over things, I guess. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> that I will try to help. I get knocked off the rock, and then you appear <laughs> right where I was standing. And then I'm gonna take three hits okay. against it. I'm sorry for all the people. <laughs> um, with my great weapon master, so let's see what we can do. 14 to hit. Uh, that recoils off the armored body of the King Killer Hydra. 24 to hit. That one does does manage to, it, just going for the same spot, you crash into it. All right, one more, and, oh, a crit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll do them separate. And the crit lops off another one of oh, its no. heads. That's not what I wanted, but it's fine. Um, okay, so I, d I just did the math on all of this. 34 damage on the crit. Okay. And 21 damage on the regular. 55 total? Okay. As you lop off another one of its heads, a spray of acidic blood uh, spurts out from it, and everyone within, because it was two hits, so I rolled 66 damage, so everybody within five feet of it takes 30 points of acid damage. Is that five feet? Um, Just use the edge of that. Can I fit, can I fit in between? Oh yeah. 30? Yeah, 30 acid damage. Nice. Which um, would include Wilhelm, Ava, and another Hooded Lantern. Well, oh no! <laughs> well, uh, Wilhelm's on the other side. Cool. I think I, I technically I fell off the rock, but I mean. Yeah, it, it oh, moved theory. up. Yeah, it moved up to him with his movements. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of melted people. Yeah. Like Thirty, right? Yeah. Oh. That's oh. Great. <sighs> All right, it Ava, it is your turn. Okay, quick question: um, Is it undead? It is not undead. Okay. Uh, then I. Oh wait. It is a monstrosity. Sorry, I just. This is probably too late for this, but I just realized that dispel magic is an abjuration spell, so I could have activated my arcane ward, but I didn't. Uh, would it just saved you some damage? Yes. Okay, take it off. Okay, it would have saved me thirty-eight points of damage before it disappeared, so it would be at zero now, but I would have taken instead of fifty damage. I, uh, as as a brand new guest in your first combat encounter, and a newbie wizard, yeah, and a newbie wizard, kicking it yeah, off at yeah, level sixteen, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So wait, thirty-eight. Cool. All right, that's much better. Important, that important, important. Terrible. Yep, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. So I am going to cast. I mean, I guess I should stand up. Um, just for funsies. I'm not going to move out of its range because that would be silly, but I am going to cast Sickening Radiance in 30 foot radius. Uh, is this 30 feet? No, Fireball's bigger not than that. Not quite. It's, it is it's larger 20. than that, but oh, if I you see. would like to. Uh, I'm going to hit either the pig or the horse. This is a measuring I think stick. the pig's already the been pig's already been. Oh, pig's dead? Okay. It's bacon. If you'd like okay, to use that to mark the center. It's been cooked. Oh, okay, great. Uh, so, sorry, it's a 30 foot radius, and this is what? This oh is. my god, 30 foot radius? Yeah. So that's like 60 feet yeah. So across. Wait, what is this measurement? It says 10. Uh, which is 10 squares, so that's 50 feet. Oh, okay, great. Uh, do you want the six? So, There's the six, so oh, that's 30 great. feet. Thank you. All right, so then I'm gonna say, yeah, I want it to get the, to get this guy, but not anyone else. Oh, that poor horse. <laughs> Wait, let me see if this would get it. This would get its butt, but I think everything else is safe. Okay. Unless there's someone in this house, because <laughs> it goes around corners. Uh, yeah, centered on this glowy thing, I will cast Sickening Radiance, and it has to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, I get a natural one. <gasps> Yay! Yay! Okay, it is going to take 4d10 radiant damage. One. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Flash! It's like uh, yeah. one of those really high powered flashlights right in your. You, you do, baby. Okay, that is. I do. Um, I do. I forgot. 
12, 18 radiant damage. Okay. It takes a level of exhaustion. Ow. Yes. And it is now emitting a dim greenish light in a five foot radius. Okay. So, the, the, so this happens every time it starts its turn there. So we'll count this as when it started its yes, turn. Yes, when it okay. starts its turn Great. there, it moves into the area. Great, because it, it naturally will. Lovely turn. Anything else, Ava? Uh, ooh, I think that's it for me. Okay, good first move. Wrath. Now, what does the level of exhaustion do? Um, it, right now, it is a disadvantage on ability checks. Level two exhaustion is attack rolls, and then movement and then it gets worse from there. So if it's stuck in the sickening radiance, it will continue to get the exhaustion. Well, let's see if we can keep it in the exhaustion. I will use my telekinesis to restrain it, and it has disadvantage on its strength save. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I get a 24. Okay, so it is a strength check for telekinesis, right? It, or is it a strength save? It's a strength, uh, it's a contested check. Uh, oh, that's a... Smart, smart. Uh, up to, uh, so it's a it's a it's its creature strength check ability that, tur- that, tur- that turns a twenty seven into a eight. <gasps> yeah, yeah! yeah! Combo! <laughs> so it is telekinetically. <laughs> and now it has disadvantage on deck saves, and everything has attack uh, advantage on attack rolls against it. Having two spellcasters <laughs> is cool. And it got fireballs, so I can't grow my heads back. We will destroy this. Thing. <laughs> okay. Good combo. So, yeah. I, so it is restrained in the air. In space. Okay. I, I'm not gonna move it. I'm just gonna okay. hold it in place. Um, it is going I to step back. Too. Okay. <laughs> um, it actually does have a 15 foot reach. So that would provoke an opportunity attack from it. I will stand exactly where I was. <laughs> okay. And not be a coward. <laughs> Even though it has disadvantage on attack rolls, it okay. is going to, it has a mission. It's going to make all of its attacks against um, Wilhelm with its heads. Oh, man. Um, with disadvantage, uh, the first attack is a 22 to hit. Yep. The second is a 24. Yep. And the third is a 23. Yep. So that is a total of 54 piercing damage Ooh. as the heads bite into you and try to rip you apart. Yikes. And Ouch, then it does a massive tail sweep that sweeps around in a wide arc, and it's going to try to tail sweep Ava and Wrath, getting a 26 against Wrath and a nice. 23 against Ava. Yep. So the two of you both take 18 bludgeoning damage, and you both need to make strength saves and con saves for concentration. 18 bludgeoning damage. So a strength save first. Strength save is a nine. Okay. What happens? We'll get to that. Okay. My strength save is a 12. Okay. Its tail, it lashes the two of you, and it smacks you with the tail, and you go flying 20 feet into the water. (laughs) Hey! Oh, no. Splash! <laughs> Splash! Is it on the other side of the bridge for me, or on this yeah, side? Yeah, on, on that side. No, uh, oh, yeah, this side. Yeah, yeah, right Got the it. first time. How contaminated is the water? Very. So, <laughs> so, so contaminated. Welcome to Dragonhead. Uh, thank you, thank you. That's um, terrible. So, uh, now I need concentration place. checks for both your spells. DC 10. Um, oh, come on. I'm gonna use a lucky to get 10. Oh, it's a saving throw, right? Yeah, it's, it's oh, a con saving throw. That's an 11 then. Okay, so you both maintain concentration. I rolled a four. I rolled two threes. Ava, oh, I think you actually both get knocked into Ava's sickening radiance. Oh, that's oh, right! No. Oh, no. <laughs> Concentra- uh, constitution saving throws against Ava's sickening radiance. Oh, the radiance God. damage. Every time. <laughs> Classic. Uh, I get a 10. That fails. <laughs> and I get, wait, sorry, this is a I Against your save. own spell save. So I actually succeed. I get a, I get a 25 in my spell save. Can you choose who people to not save? Is that like the evocation wizard, or is there no It, it is, but. Yeah, evocation wizards can do it, but abjuration wizards. Yeah, yeah. Bummer. So I start. Sorry. Well, that's okay. So, I love radiant damage. So you take 18 radiant damage. I get halved to nine. Okay, and, and one level of exhaustion. Oh, no. oh I forgot about that. Part. But then you're both also knocked into the contaminated water. Oh. <laughs> so I need another con save. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, what have we done? 
Uh, I'm just, I made my concentration check for sickening radiance. Okay. But now I have another yeah, con Another con save. save. What did you get for you? 24. Your... You're good. I get a 12. You take 10 necrotic damage and gain one level of contamination. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Do you guys remember that yes. time? Yes! Now we have the upper hand against the whip! <laughs> <laughs> I'm choking on water. So <laughs> we were, I might have been a little. <laughs> I jumped the gun. So now I take a level of contamination. Oh, yeah. And you took 10 necrotic damage, so I need one more concentration check for telekinesis. Oh my god, can he hold it? Can he hold it? I do, I get I credit. Okay. Alright. So I'm still hold I'm like I'm underwater and I'm like, I think I can hold on. I think I can hold on. Oh my god. As I'm puking up. So I took radiant damage and necrotic damage. Yeah. But because I'm an Azamar, I'm I'm it's like actually like those are the least affecting Oh, that's good. But I am exhausted. Okay. And do I have to roll for contamination? Uh, you already did. Or like my d6. Uh, you didn't, you succeeded your save. Oh, did you fail the save against contamination? Uh, I got a 12. Right, yes, yeah, so roll a d6 and see if you mutate. Oh no. Come on, oh, mutate. I got a three. You don't mutate. <sighs> Bummer. <laughs> he likes they can mutation. sometimes be fun, but they can sometimes be fun. I horrifying. actually love mutation. Okay. So now, after all that, what a turn. There's a whistling sound in the bombardment. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to roll the d4 to find no, out how many bombs drop? I will do it. Just one. Just get a one. One! Yay! Okay. Who would like to roll the d4 to find out which quadrant it lands in? I will do it. Yeah. Please don't land in this one. One. It lands in that one. This one? This bu uh, That building there. Oh, so cool. that building just gets annihilated. Is there anyone in the vicinity? Uh, I mean, there's some people. There's a person and a donkey here. I, I think that they're, they're, they are man they managed to run away. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And take that off. <laughs> Remember that time that I rolled into town saying, let's just take care of this and offer them like help and we're gonna fix the town, we're gonna repair their buildings. Mm -hmm. Easy breezy way to start this whole mission. Our how mere- think, How do you guys think it's going? Our mere yeah. presence, you know? The hell is paved with good intentions. Oh, uh, that's Wilhelm. So the, the bomb <laughs> lands, but fortunately no one is caught in the crossfire of, of it as the bombardment continues. But you can see that other parts of the city are getting attacked. Uh Oh, besides the one where we are. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's kind of the, with the the exact marker going off. Um, the 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 second vo volley was indiscriminate, and so a wide range, a swath of destruction is is uh, fired across the city. But since you did take out the the whaling, they take that to mean as target eliminated. So the bombardment has ended for now. That's the last mm -hmm. round of it. Whew. Mm -hmm. So with that, we go to Wilhelm. Huh. <laughs> um, I stand up, and um, that was a bad stand up. <laughs> I stand up, Stumble. and I guess I, I was based with it, so I'm still. And it is restrained, so you have advantage on attack rolls. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, because gonna... Wrath met, despite being hit with a tail, thrown into an ally spell, and landing in contaminated water, you still managed to hold on to the telekinesis <laughs> the whole time. Incredible. It's all about the advantage and lucky. Well, that advantage is going to be very helpful because I. Use Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. Lucky saves us. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Uh, so that's going to be uh, 29 to hit. That's Aww. better. It punctures a vulnerable piece of the machinery sustaining this creature. And we're just going to roll a ton of dice. <laughs> Fifty-eight damage. <laughs> yes. It's bloody. Oh, it's bloody. Finish it. I oh, I mean swing again. With advantage still? Yeah, because it's still restrained. Makes sense. Okay, that's gonna be yeah, uh, uh, even higher. But 
can only sneak attack once. 30 damage. Amazing. Amazing turn. Uh, yeah, and Wilhelm very bloodily probably wishes he had killed that thing on that turn. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like, oh no. <laughs> it's going to use one legendary action to bite you. Cool. I was going to say, is there more acid too? Getting a 20 to hit. My AC is 20. So it hits you for 18 damage, and with the attack that you hit it for two attacks, you did hit it twice, right? Yeah. So acid blood sprays everywhere, and you and everyone within five feet of it take... Uh, I'm at zero hit points. Oh, you're down. Yeah. You were down from, from the bite. From the oh, bite. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, so but then, Wilhelm, you see this glow from the water as you, as your name in the book, the book opens in, in, <clears throat> in the water and Wilhelm's name highlights as you stand up. Well, good, because this feels repetitive of a <laughs> former situation I found myself in with a different character and... Uh, <laughs> Acid and damage? Or, and or the last time you fought this Hydra. <laughs> How so many hit points did you have before? 11. Before you started attacking, eleven. Yeah. Okay, so um, you would have gone down from the acid damage, mm -hmm. and then been brought up to one hit point, and then bit and knocked back down to one. So you're now at zero and dying. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the acid damage would have happened before its own bite. And it did it attack with disadvantage on the bite attack. Yes. Darn it. Yeah. You know, I thought with my awesome sword and my good armor that I could, I could, I could finish this thing off, and that was a folly on my part. Wilhelm, the the high. So as the acid splashes onto you from the attacks that you made against it, you find yourself falling, falling down, and Wrath's magic brings you back up just in time for it to bite down on you. And Rudy, as we come to your turn, the two remaining heads of the Hydra. Are are poised to just rip Wilhelm to shreds. Oh god. Um. Okay. I think the only thing I can do is give you a greater healing potion. Do you have a superior healing potion on you? Uh, good question. Let's see. I've got. Uh, yes. You I can, can see that this creature is restrained by magic. So, it will continue, as long as Wilhelm is before it, it is its target. Yeah. It will continue attacking him so long as he is here. I do have a superior healing potion on me. Yeah, I'm just worried if I attack it that it's going to keep going after you and you're going uh, Well, if you do attack it, its blood will splash and yeah. damage Wilhelm, giving him automatic failed death saves. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you have a superior? Mm -hmm. Can I take his superior and give it to him? Yep. That'll yeah. be, that would be an action. So you're yeah. down, and then you're up. How much is this up here? 40. 40. Okay. Um. You live! I... Let me just... <sighs> oh, that's all happening again. <laughs> this and Hydra, man. I am going to, as my bonus action, shift into my wolfish form as a shifter, and I just let out a howl, and I try to like position myself in front of Wilhelm as much as I can. Not okay. that it, it can reach around me, but like, just as a symbolic, like, you gotta get through me first before you take him. All right, well to that effect, it's going to attack you with another legendary action. Uh, actually, it only, with disadvantage, it gets 17 to hit. No. Where was that 17 against me? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. My dice have a special relationship with you, Kyrie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I truly do. Um, I kind of knock its head to the side and crash. Ava, it is your turn. Okay, so sickening radiance, it does its thing every turn. So it's going to do its own thing to you now. Because you're starting in your own sickening radiance. You're right. Can you move it? But it hasn't had, uh, had its turn yet. No. Okay, no, Those are legendary point you actions, choose, right? yeah. And when a creature starts his turn, so even if I wanted to like drop it, I would still start my turn first. But I don't think I should probably drop it because it. You want to gamble? Well, but you're in it too. 
I love it, I guess. He does have resistance to radiant damage. Just not resistance to exhaustion. I mean, Everyone I can gets keep tired. wasting high level spell slots on bad plans. If that's, <laughs> if that's good with everyone. Hey, honestly, we're I'm of the mind of that. That's my that's my game. Because like I could drop it and then you know what? I got these spell slots. What am I? I, got, I should use them. Yeah. I should use them. All right, I'm gonna drop sickening radiance. That was obviously his. okay. Okay. Uh, and then instead, I you're up now. Yeah. I'm gonna cast. No, he's not. He is unconscious. No, oh, I thought just he was. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm gonna cast polymorph on Wilhelm. Yes. Oh. What am I becoming? I mean, I feel like it should be a T Rex. Yeah. Big Linda. <laughs> <laughs> T- yes. Tyrannosaurus. No, I got nothing. What were you trying to point on? Uh, my name. Like. Oh, right. Like Tyrannosaurus Rex with a W. Yeah, that works. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I that's, dig it. that's my dog's name. Oh. With the W. I love that. Wex. Wex. Well, Tyrannosaurus t- Wex. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's a T Rex, but it has sparkly eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it, Rex is king, so. That's true. Yeah, yeah so he's, he's just Wilhelmosaurus Rex? Wilhelmosaurus Rex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wex, though. It's Wex with a W. Will Hamasaurus Wex. (laughs) (laughs) Hamasaurus? Oh, this just even the odds I try to say, but instead I go, Would you like to move out of the contaminated water? Yes. Uh, I'm going to climb up onto the bridge. Okay. (laughs) I understand. I'm going to stay back there, though. I don't need to be up there. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Um, seeing a fellow reptilian predator, the uh, if that's the end of your turn, I'm going to use my last legendary action to attack uh, Wilhelmosaurus Wex. Oh, I need, uh, <laughs> I need to look up. Uh, with disadvantage, I only get a 17, which I actually still think. I think it just crushes it. Yeah. I need to. I need to quickly just get. Uh, yeah, up. it does hit you. So you take 18 damage. You have 136 hit points in this form. Just turn the tides. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I can't heal, but I can do the second best. Thing. So, it got me for how much? Uh, 18 points. <laughs> Wrath, it is your turn. Uh, can I fly out of the water with my wind Yeah, with boots? your boots of flying? <laughs> <laughs> and I cough up a bunch of uh, contaminated Sorry. water. <laughs> I was drowning. Um, and I want to try to. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to start blasting. No, wait. Because people start dying when I blast with it. I'm gonna try to hold the the restraint. Okay. Um, so a, a post ability check because it is still in the sick. The sickening radiance is gone, so it's actually no longer exhausted. Nineteen. I it in. loses its exhaustion once. Yeah. It yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's a natural. You're not exhausted either. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's good. Um, I get a natural twenty on the strength you, check. You win. Can I silvery barbs as a as a wow. reaction? Wow. <gasps> <laughs> the, the disappointment is good. <laughs> My disappointment is immeasurable. My Yay. days for <laughs> silvery barbs is totally fine. But what about when you use it on hard cure out control spells, Kelly? Yeah, this is great. I, I got I'm thir- having a time. Oh, I got a nineteen. Do you want to move it? Uh, you can move it up to thirty feet in any direction. Can I move it five feet away from everything? <laughs> can I can I suspend it in the air so it's at, it's, it's yeah like so seven it's, feet it's away. Blood from everybody. would not spray on everybody, but it would still be able to attack because it has yeah. fifteen yeah. foot reach. I just need to be alerted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. And it's still still restrained. It's its turn. It didn't take fire damage last turn. Mm. Oh, that's um, um, and it's and it had two heads cut off. So it grows four heads and has oh. seven heads and makes seven attacks. No. Um, I didn't know the fire damage thing. Rudy did. Take advantage that from my silvery barbs. Cool. Whatever you need. So, um, it is going to attack Rudy a couple times. Yes. Um, getting a 20. No. I just rolled a double crit with advantage, with disadvantage. So oh. 20 and 20. Uh, so a crit. And the crit hits. And a miss. And I'll do four attacks against Wilhelm. 
Uh, it's Wilhelmosaurus. Wilhelmosaurus Wax. 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 Every single attack hits Wilhelmosaurus Wax. Uh, my AC is 13. Yeah, which means I only miss you on a one because okay. I have a plus 13 to hit. So you take 76, 72 points of damage, and Rudy, you get crit for 36 damage as the gnashing heads just tear into the reptilian form of Wilhelm, ripping out chunks of Tyrannosaurus flesh uh, and biting Rudy savagely for the critical hit. I make sad lizard noises. Oh. Oh. Um, and we go to the top of the round with Wilhelmosaurus. Wilhelmosaurus has advantage from Rudy's silvery barbs, mm-hmm. and so as I'm getting ripped apart, I bite it in all of its necks. Do I still have Lucky? No. Oh, do we still have advantage on it from it being held? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. I get uh, a 16. <laughs> Sad trombone. It's AC 17. <laughs> and my tail attack needs to be against a different target. Sorry, buddy. Oh, no. Can you whip fire at it from the building? Can I? Use my tail to smack flaming lumber <laughs> towards. Sure. Give me yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Sure. Thank you for being so kind. <laughs> I get a fifteen to hit lumber. You hit the lumber. Now hit. Make the attack roll with the tail's attack bonus against the king killer hydra. Oops. <laughs> He's just watching. It's 18. <laughs> the flaming lumber He's spike very passive. L- fires in, okay, and roll, just give me, um, <laughs> roll me 3d12 damage, plus your strength mod. 12 I love d12s. 3d12 plus yeah. my strength? It's a big beam. It's a support beam. <laughs> Terrible rolls right now. 14 damage. I only had seven hit points. <gasps> oh! <laughs> I did it with my so, tail. Y- with the tail, you launch a flaming spike into the heart of the creature, and it collapses. I managed and dies. to just like dislodge this whole roof that like goes. Oh, through, yeah. just, like I send the whole top of the flaming building, and it just like topples over and crushes it. Nice. And then I fire. and then I yell out and I let out this roar as as a banner falls behind me <laughs> that says "Welcome to Toddsfeld." <laughs> <laughs> and on that image. That is where we will wrap up our first session with our wonderful leader. Whoa! Yes. Clutch. That was so epic. Oh, boy. Oh Good job. Boy. Well, a big thank you to Ginny D for joining us with some clutch moves. I'll sickeningly radiate you anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, to our stellar uh, regular cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe. And a big thank you to Kyle for all of his awesome behind the scenes work. Thanks, Kyle. And a huge thank you to our Dungeon Master. Yes. yes. For letting us kill a Hydra with a building. Re-kill a Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stupid Hydra. And uh, of course, we have some wonderful creators that uh, and talented artists that have given us permission to use some of their incredible assets in our uh, tabletop games. And we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. All this wonderful terrain by uh, Dwarven Forge, uh, miniatures by WizKids and Hero Forge. We have some wonderful player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot and music by Tabletop Audio. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. We can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community supporting our work. So please be sure to check out our Patreon. Follow the links below. Get it on there. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons. So if you are joining us on Patreon, make sure to hop on our Discord where you can chat with us about all of the nerdy topics you want to talk to us about. And Ginny, where can uh, our audience find your stuff? I think most of them know know where that they can already, but for those who don't? Yeah, I'm everywhere as Ginny D, or it's Ginny D, or whatever. You can usually just search my name and I will pop up. I'm on the YouTube is the main one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in Drakenheim.